It is day number 42 of the fighting in Eastern Europe. Joining us now with the very latest from Ukraine is senior Newsmax correspondent John Huddy. John, good morning. Well, good morning to you. We were just in a town, a small city called Borodyanka. This is about northwest, north, north, uh, west, north, northwest, about, uh, I'd say, a 45-minute hour drive outside of Kiev. It's along one of the main highways, M06, and it's just a scene of utter devastation. This was really the front line in the fight uh, between Ukrainian forces and Russian forces. It was a town that was taken control of by the Russians before the Ukrainians then pushed in. It was a major major battleground like many of these villages many of these towns and many of these small cities has been and the devastation was just immense uh, it was you walk in the city center you take a 360 degree view everything is bombed out and it, we're starting to get a look at a lot of these locations along with emergency crews when we were there we saw firefighters basically search and rescue search and recovery teams going in and digging through the rubble uh, digging through the blown out brick and mortar trying to get to uh, the trying to access basically basements and bomb shelters where hopefully people uh, may have survived at this point. The Russians were in control. Russian troops were in control of this region right up until about four or five days ago uh, when the Ukrainian military was able to move in. And all along the main highway here, actually, these are all the, the you know, the battlefronts. Uh, so much so when I got to Ukraine and I was coming from Lviv to Kiev, we had to bypass this area to the south about 70, 80 miles because the fighting was just too intense. And now we're seeing the devastation like we saw in Bucha, the allegations of, uh, of atrocities committed on civilians. And we're starting to hear about the, uh, the, the massive death toll in some of these areas as well. Yesterday, we joined former Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko uh, in a convoy going to the north to an area called Chernihiv. This is a city that literally was the front line when Russian uh, forces invaded uh, Ukraine from Belarus. They came into that city uh, among some of the other northern cities first, and it was just a massive uh, and ferocious battle. We saw the area where Russian jets dropped bombs, blew out buildings, and we had a, a long discussion as we went on this tour with former President Poroshenko, who had this to say about the ongoing war and also about, about Vladimir Putin. Listen here. When you hear... Putin and, and Russian officials saying that they're not responsible for Ukrainian civilian deaths. What do you say to that? Definitely we uh, think that uh, we have a two recommendations. First, don't trust Putin at all. He's a complete liar. Second, don't accept Putin as an adequate person. He's mentally ill. He also said that in order for this war to stop, there are several things that must happen. First and foremost, a ceasefire. But he said he doesn't believe that the Russians are negotiating in good faith. Back to you. John Huddy, we appreciate that report. Stay safe out there, as always. Again, those uh, refugee numbers now over four and a half million. The U.N. originally estimating between four and five million. We're almost there. Unbelievable stuff. John Huddy joining us just outside Kiev. As a policy matter, we're not conducting any training on this new equipment. So my question is, why not? We're not conducting training in Ukraine. We're not conducting training in Poland, outside of Ukraine. That's what he testified. There's yeah, literally me, a handoff. Let me dig into that. And that drives my question, then. Are we training the Ukrainians outside of Ukraine in any location? Uh, to use some of the gear, uh, you certainly, they, they have to have training. And, and we're doing that. So. Yeah, we dug into that. There's no training happening in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, or Bulgaria, all NATO countries that are in and around the region of Ukraine, some border Ukraine. Um, so the U.S. is sending military aid into Ukraine. The focus now shifting, as you just heard, to the Ukrainian army and whether or not they've been trained on this very advanced defensive weaponry that's being sent into the country every single day. For more on this, let's welcome back Green Beret National Guard Colonel and member of the House Armed Services Committee for Congressman Mike Waltz back with us. Uh, Congressman, great to have you back on. Uh, during yesterday's House Armed Services Committee hearing, so you pressed General Mark Milley right there. Uh, we just played the soundbite. Lloyd Austin chimed in, the Defense Secretary. Um, the training of the Ukrainian Army on the equipment that's being sent in is a huge issue. They both seem surprised by your question. What'd you make of that? 
Well, I think the thing they were surprised by was we had the commander of NATO, General Walters, uh, in uh, to our committee just last week, uh, and he testified no training was ongoing, that literally we unload the uh, uh, equipment. And some of this now, finally, belatedly, uh, is the more advanced equipment that Ukraine's been asking for for over a year, like different types of radars and more advanced uh, drones. Uh, and the commander of NATO testified that we give it to the Ukrainians, but as a policy matter, we are not providing the training on how to best use it. Uh, but yet now I have the Secretary of Defense testifying that, yo, yes, we are, but then wouldn't state where we're doing it. And, and wouldn't uh, commit, wouldn't commit firmly that they right. are, in fact, being trained in NATO countries that border Ukraine. So it makes no sense that we're going to spend literally hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, on sending equipment to Ukraine. If the Ukrainian army doesn't know how to use this stuff, it's pointless. Yeah, th th these aren't things where you can just pull out an instruction manual and, right. and deploy a radar that can detect Russian artillery uh, and, and try to direct Ukrainian artillery to, to take it out. Uh, you actually need the training. And my suspicion is that the Biden White House has deemed training the Ukrainians outside of Ukraine is too escalatory, too provocative, will offend Putin. Uh, and, and that's why they haven't had this more advanced equipment in the first place. Uh, so, again, the, the Biden White House continues to tiptoe around uh, and let Putin set and dictate the terms. Right. Uh, again, no. U.S. forces in Ukraine. I'm not calling for that, but give them all of the equipment and the training they need to fight their fight. Well, otherwise, it's not worth doing. And all you have to do is go back to the 80s, Charlie Wilson's war. Uh, the Texas congressman made sure that the Afghans were trained on the military equipment that we were sending them so they could beat the Russian army. It took them 10 That's years, not... but eventually they did and kicked the Russian army out of Afghanistan. Um, yesterday, Mark Milley made comments about how long he thinks this war will last. Take a listen. But I do think this is a very protracted conflict. Uh, and I think it's at least measured in years. I don't know about decade, but at least years for sure. Uh, this is a very extended conflict that Russia has initiated. Uh, and, and I think that uh, NATO, uh, the United States, Ukraine and all of the uh, allies and partners that are supporting Ukraine are going to be involved in this for quite some time. So, Congressman, what do you make of that? Yesterday, Putin propaganda, uh, he said he wants this thing wrapped up by May. But there you've got the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying this could be another Afghanistan. Well, the... The war has actually been going on uh, for eight years already. Right. I mean, Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, and the Obama administration literally threw blankets at the problem. It wasn't until President Trump uh, that we started giving lethal aid in the first place. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't disagree with that assessment, but I think it points to a bigger issue in that we are not, uh, our policy objective isn't to help Zelensky win, it's to basically manage a stalemate that will go on for years and years and cost many more lives. Uh, I, I would like to see a strategy from the Pentagon. How do we help Zelensky actually drive Russia off of their soil, right. uh, drive them out of Crimea, drive them out of the, the, the Donbass, uh, and, and achieve victory and restore their borders and sovereignty? But that's not what we're seeing from this White House. We're seeing how do we manage the situation. Yeah, that's a good point. Restore their borders back to what they were in 1991 um, when Ukraine became independent, sovereign. Um, Congressman, before we let you go, uh, you recently came out with a children's book. It's called Donna the Brave. Um, you've partnered with Brave Books to donate $15 for every person that subscribes this month. Obviously, this there are a whole series of books out. Yours is Donna the Brave. Um, how important is this uh, for what's going on in Ukraine? But also, the lessons in this book are a little bit different. This is not a normal kid's book. No, this is a subscription. Uh, the kids get one per month, and it's focused on conservative traditional values, faith, family. In the case of my book, Service to Country, you know, we're all wringing our hands uh, about the garbage that's being taught to our kids in schools that were exposed right. uh, by the COVID lockdown. So let's do something about it. Go to bravebooks.com. It's not available on Amazon. Go to bravebooks.com. Order a, a subscription. Your kid will get a, a, a new book every month, ages six to ten years old. Uh, and and let's let's start taking our children's education back uh, into our own hands and teaching them. Uh, how to be great American citizens with the values we would want them yeah, to have. Yeah, I love it. It talks about family values. Congressman, quickly, did you do the illustrations for your book? <laughs> no, you don't They're want to do They're very good. Uh, we had some help on that. Yeah. Great books. 
All right, Congressman Michael Waltz, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate your insight and uh, look forward to seeing those books on store shelves soon. Thanks so much. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.